I'm Charles Scott King, WNEW News. At nine minutes past ten, time for Sears Radio Theater. That's the theme from the Sears Radio Theater. Tonight, a program of adventure with Richard Widmark as your host. Here's a preview. Your wife was brought here by paramedics, Mrs. Randall Cole. Yes, yes, she's a next-door neighbor. It seems she was having coffee with your wife when your wife, Nancy, suddenly stood up very straight, looked ahead with a vacant stare, and then collapsed. The Sears Radio Theater will begin after this message from your local station. Everybody loves a mystery. It's fun to be baffled by clues and excited by hair-raising tales. That's why mystery lovers enjoy the CBS Radio Mystery Theater, heard daily over most of these stations. Host E.G. Marshall brings you dramas of intrigue, detection, horror, and suspense, like this. It's a long time, do you know? And who remembers all the names the way they can change with the passing years? You're still the one expected, are you not? Expected? The voice was after telling me you'd be back. Did you not hear it yourself? The voice? What else would you call it? You'll not be telling me it didn't call you then. Else why are you here again? Enjoy the thrill of a good mystery story played out on the stage of your imagination. The CBS Radio Mystery Theater. Seven days a week on most of these CBS Radio Network stations. This is Howard Duff speaking for Richard Widmark. The tomb of King Tutankhamun was first discovered in 1922. He had lain silent and undisturbed for thousands of years, and when at last his private domain was intruded upon, he yielded up a vast wealth of riches. There were golden objects, drinking chalices, necklaces, bracelets, and jewels. Jewels beyond belief, and something many people chose to overlook. A curse. A year later, another tomb was discovered. The tomb of Princess Kiestri, a member of one of the first ruling families of Egypt. The whereabouts of her tomb had been known before, but no man had ever dared to investigate it. Princess Kiestri lived long before Tut, long before the Great Pyramid of Cheops and the Great Sphinx of Giza, during a period in which superstition and magic played an important role in everyday life. A time when it wasn't known for certain that the moon and the sun would rise where black cats were believed to have special powers, and a curse was a very serious matter. What are we stopping for? I don't see anything. We're here. Well, I don't see any tomb. Come on, follow me. Uh, It's just over this mound. Here. Here's the entrance. You mean it's underground? I thought there'd be a pyramid. Uh, they didn't build pyramids then. Well, are you going in or not? Oh, we're going. Yeah, but if, if there's really a curse... How many times do I have to tell you it's just to scare people away? It's perfectly safe. This tomb has been here for thousands of years. Now, bring your flashlight. Let's go. No, oh, all right. Are you sure you won't come with us, Ben? I told you I'd bring you here for 20% of what you take. But there's no way I'm going in. Uh, Suit yourself. Well, I'm ready. Let's get started. It's narrow. I don't see anything yet, you? No. Oh, wait. Look at that wall. The pictures. Don't waste your time looking at pictures. We have to find the room. Look! Where? Over there. I thought I saw something. This is it! I can't believe we found it so easily. So what are we waiting for? Come on, let's get it! It's amazing that all this has just been sitting here. But no, it's all ours. Give me another knapsack. Hey, hey, hey. What have you got in the box? Uh, oh, it's just a necklace. Doesn't have much gold. Look at it. That black cat in the center. Hmm? Those eyes. Uh, What's that? Oh, I don't know. It's... Uh, uh, it's, it's an earthquake. It's the curse. An 
that's only the beginning of our story. Sears Radio Theater, a new adventure in radio listening. Five nights of exceptional entertainment every week brought to you in Elliot Lewis' production of The Sears Radio Theater. Our story, The Curse of Princess Kiestri by David Chomsky. Our star, Byron Kane. The Sears Radio Theater is brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company. Sears, where America shops for value. Your baby's room. Furnish it with the quaintness and charm of Sears Jenny Lynn's crib, dresser, and chest. Your baby will be secure in our old-fashioned crib built with high sides and a safety drop-side latch. And each handsome maple color piece comes in a non-toxic finish. Sears Jenny Lynn dresser and chest is furniture that will adapt gracefully as baby grows older, too. So visit us soon, because Sears has baby buys bundled up. Available at most Sears retail stores. Hi, I'm Bud Palmer, inviting you to the Sears Spring Home Appliance Sale. Come celebrate spring and save from $20 to $100 on selected Sears major home appliances. Save big on washers, dryers, ranges, and microwave ovens, refrigerators and dishwashers, sewing machines, vacuum cleaners, color TVs, and stereos. Celebrate spring. Save at Sears now. Sale ends April 28th. Dates may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Available in most Sears retail stores. Kenmore. Solid as Sears. Hey, look, in here, inside this stylish man's dress shirt. I'm a Sears Value dress shirt label, just popping with pride. Because Sears Value dress shirts are sure to be popular for a number of reasons. They have fashion spread collars, come in classic patterns and solids in short sleeves. You'll appreciate the permapressed polyester or polyester cotton blends for easy care. Plus, at low value prices, what a buy. Just look for me, the Value dress shirt label at Sears Men's Store, where style, sense, and satisfaction combine to label me right for you. Because of the number of freak accidents and deaths associated with the excavation of Princess Kiestri's tomb, the government soon found it impossible to find anyone willing to work on the project. They all feared the curse. The excavation was halted and the tomb sealed, but not before many of the treasures had been removed. It's interesting to note that nothing taken from the tomb can be accounted for today. Well, uh... Almost none. It was the morning of my fifth wedding anniversary, and like most women, Nancy thought I'd forgotten. I spent a few extra minutes in the bathroom just to let her stew a bit before I went down to breakfast. Who would have thought this anniversary was the beginning of the end? Morning, honey. Good morning. Mm. Mm. That bacon smells good. Well, sit down. It'll be ready soon. I poured your coffee. I'm starving. I have some toast, but not too much jam. It's not good for you. So, what's going on at school today? Is that all you have to say? Why? Oh, nothing. I just thought you'd... (laughs) Oh, never mind. I was just wondering what you'd be teaching those bright minds in the fifth grade today. The Civil War. And here's your bacon and eggs. Civil War all in one day? (laughs) No, we're just starting. What are you up to? Me? Me? I'm not up to anything. Yes, you are. Now, what is it? Oh, it's nothing. Kevin. Uh, By the way, we don't have any plans for tonight, do we? (laughs) No. Good, because I want to ask the Randalls over. Kevin! (laughs) Okay, I'm kidding. (laughs) You know I wouldn't forget. I'm going to take you out to dinner and make this anniversary better than last year. Oh, where are you going to take me? Not surprised. Oh, come on. All right, all right. We are going to go to that very exclusive, very new, and very chic... The new French restaurant that just opened? Ah, oui, oui, madame. <laughs> I had to make those reservations quite a while ago. Oh, goodness me. Look at the time. I will be late for work. Now, give me a kiss. Mwah. Au revoir, ma chère. I will catch you later. <laughs> It was a few minutes late when I got off the bus, so I hurried up the street at a faster-than-normal pace. When I walked into the office, the girls were busy typing their hearts away. Morning, Brenda. Sherry. Kevin. Kevin! Morning, Roger. Do you have the McDaniels report? Sure. Got it right here. Good. Why don't you step in my office? 
You want some coffee? No, thanks. Uh, what do you want to see the report for? Kevin. Kevin, Kevin. What? How long have I known you? Oh, long time. I can't believe you've been married for five years today. Congratulations. <laughs> Are you checking up on me? Well, when you take the only girl I ever wanted. Oh, ho, ho. who are you kidding? You've always had more girlfriends than I can ever remember. <laughs> but there's only one Nancy. I think it's great. Really. Thank you. What did you get her? Well, I saw this necklace in that jewelry shop around the corner. You mean you didn't actually buy it yet? No. Well, what are you going to do if they sell it? That's a small shop. I'm sure they don't have a large stock. Oh, don't worry about it. I'm not. Hey, take it from me. Don't ever disappoint a lady. They never forget. I'm not going to forget. Why are you buying something from such a small shop? Well, he's got some nice things. Oh, it's junk. You're not going to find anything nice in there. Half of it's secondhand anyway. Oh, maybe so. But you ought to see this necklace. Well, it doesn't matter. You can't give her something cheap. She's not going to care how much it costs. She may not say so, but trust me, don't get her anything cheap. Well, don't worry about it, Roger. Besides, it really doesn't matter. The nice thing is the pendant. It's a cat. A cat? A black cat. I don't know what kind of stone it's carved out of, but it's got two emeralds for eyes. Nancy's going to love it. You know how she's crazy about cats. That's why I'm getting it for her. Mm, well, check it out. Some of these small shots will really take you. Now, I want to go over the report with you. Mr. Flanders wants it this afternoon. So I guess that means you might even get out of here early. Is that your present to me? Could be. But Mr. Flanders might have other plans. Now, let's have a look at the report. Roger sure is a nut. A good friend. I mean, he's always looking out for me, but sometimes he worries about nothing at all. Anyway, Mr. Flanders was very impressed with my report, and I was able to take the afternoon off. I walked down the street and turned the corner where the jewelry shop was. Walked into the store and began browsing. I wasn't in any hurry. Now that I know what happened, I should have been in a hurry. I should have run for my life. I'm out of control. Be cool, be natural, take it light. But where do I start? With the basics like the new Pretty Natural Light Shaper from Sears. The Pretty Natural Light helps keep you smooth all day under your clothes, giving you a shape that's soft and natural thanks to the shimmery lightweight power net. Never intimidates because its control is moderate with a front panel that helps keep your tummy where you want it. Great! I'll ease into control with a Pretty Natural Light. It's new at larger Sears retail stores. This year, my mom is dressing me up in pretty things from the Sunny Bunch collection at Sears. That's right. She'll look fresh and feminine in these dresses and separates. I can choose from frilly, colorful dresses, bouncy skirts, pants, and just the right coordinating tops. Sizes 7 to 14 in easy care fabric that's machine washable. Whether I'm going to a birthday party or just school, my Sunny Bunch clothes make me feel special. You are special. Thanks, Mom. Available at most larger Sears retail stores. I sell draperies at Sears. Yesterday, a lady came in and said that she'd been in and out of about every store in town looking for draperies and at this point didn't know what she wanted anymore. I asked questions about her tastes and decor and then made suggestions. She was thrilled. She found what she wanted and learned a little too. It made me feel good to know that I helped her out. Sears people are friendly people who help you find what you want. Sears, 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 where America shops. Browsing, young Kevin called it. An odd term for looking for an object that will change your life forever. Uh, can I help you? Uh, yes, I came in here the day before yesterday. I was looking at a necklace. Oh, yes, yes, I remember. Uh, the black cat. It's right here. Oh, good. Uh, here you are. Well, go ahead, hold it. Hmm. It's heavy. It's a real unique piece. Looks kind of Egyptian, don't it? Yeah, I suppose it does. Cat is so cold. How'd you get it? Oh, you come by pieces many different ways. Uh, this is obviously old, probably from the 20s. Well, you, you know, Egyptian things are very popular then. Anyway, this young fellow, who probably in his 40s, brought it in not more than a week ago. 
I, I cleaned it up a bit. They had to fix one of the settings there in the eye. But I remember it, because just after I gave him the money for it, he left and was going right across the street, here. And a truck hit him. Killed him like that. Oh, horrible. Just horrible. So, uh, you want it? Well, uh, is it 14 karat gold? Oh, here, uh, give it to me. It should be marked. <laughs> I can't find it. Well, a lot of older pieces aren't marked, but, but I guarantee you it's real. Uh, you can feel how heavy it is. But look, if you don't want it, I'm not going to twist your arm. Uh, I'll just put it back. Oh, no, 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 I'll, I'll take it. Here, let me write your check. I wrote out the check and handed it to him. As I pocketed the necklace, a strange feeling came over me. A feeling of doom. I tried to banish it from my mind, but it wouldn't go away. I put my hand into my jacket pocket to feel the necklace. I held the cat in my hand. I was surprised to find that the cat was hot. And this piece of stone, or whatever it was, was hot. I took it out of my pocket and stared at it. Suddenly, I realized the cat was staring back. By the time I reached home, I'd put all thoughts of the cat out of my mind. I was looking forward to dinner at this new restaurant with Nancy. I was planning on giving her the necklace during dinner. She looked absolutely beautiful as we entered the restaurant. I love this place. Thank you for bringing me here. More champagne? Oh, I'd love some. And now, a toast to the most beautiful girl in the world. <laughs> and to me, the luckiest man to have married her. Oh, not too fast. I know. I remember what happened last time. And now I have a little surprise. What? Here you go. Now, what could be in this box? Oh, you broke it. Oh, no. Did I? <laughs> no. <laughs> go ahead and open it. Oh. Oh, Kevin. <gasps> it's beautiful. Do you like it? I love it. It's heavy. I know you have a thing for cats, so when I saw it, I knew I had to get it for you. It's gorgeous. You don't like it. Oh, Kevin, thank you. Why don't you put it on? Okay. Kevin. There you go. Oh, now, how does it look? Great. The cat's eyes look like they're glowing. Oh, the cat looks so mysterious. And it's so warm. Feel it. Hmm. You like it? Oh, yes. Good. I'm glad. We got home at a relatively decent hour After all, we both had to work the next day The evening had been a total success Except perhaps I'd had just a bit too much to drink And as soon as we got into bed, I fell into a deep sleep I don't know what exactly happened or why But that was the last time I ever saw Nancy again Now, try to understand this when I woke up the next morning, things were different. Nancy was there, but she was different. It was just a subtle change. But the girl I'd slept beside was not the same one I woke up with. Radio Theater will return after this message from your local station. Hey, sit down, honey. Is this the first time you've interviewed an important celebrity like the old crooner? Gosh, you sure are relaxed. Is it just an act? No, honey, nothing bothers the old crooner. I just go out there and be my wonderful self. No tensions or anything? Not a thing, honey, except this young doctor told me the old crooner has high blood pressure. Are you following your treatment every day? Hey, no need to. Like I said, no tensions or nerves to hassle the old crooner. 
That doesn't matter. High blood pressure usually has no symptoms. No symptoms at all? Well, that's why it's so important for you to follow your treatment every day, even if you feel relaxed. You have to control high blood pressure all the time. Well, actually, I don't think I ever heard you sing. Do you mind doing a few of your hits? Me sing? No, never sing anymore now that I've been elected governor of the state. Hit a few wrong notes there, too, huh? Uh -huh. <laughs> to learn more, the National High Blood Pressure Education Program urges you to consult your doctor, health department, heart association, or local high blood pressure education program. <laughs> Big One's got a contract out on you, and me, and everybody. The Big One kills more than half the people who die each year. My name is Hart, Sam Hart, and I've been after the Big One for years. The victims are typically wealthy, young, attractive, white, female or male, elder, black, middle class, not so pretty, hardworking, fashionably bored, corporate magnets, high school dropouts, no criminal record, just plain folks. Eccentric writers, housewives, free thinkers, rock stars. Everybody. The big one hits everybody. We're talking about heart and blood vessel disease. More people die from heart and blood vessel disease each year than from all other causes combined. The American Heart Association thinks it well worth your while to learn the risk factors of heart disease and avoid them. We're fighting for your life. piece of stone which goes from cold to hot. A wife who goes to sleep, a person you know and love, and awakens subtly different. Almost a stranger. Give me some more jam. You want more jam? Yes. Okay, I'll get it. You sure you want more jam? Didn't you hear me the first time? Here you go. Thank you. Honey, you're not telling me something. Like what? Like you're pregnant. Oh, don't be stupid. Of course I'm not pregnant. I just thought I'd ask. You don't have to bite my head off. Didn't you sleep well? <laughs> no, I didn't. I kept rolling over on the necklace and it woke me up. You slept with it? The catch was stuck and I couldn't get it off. Oh, here. Let me try and get it. No! Don't touch it! Don't come near me! Well, I just want to help I you. don't need any help! But if the catch is stuck, I can take it back and get it fixed. <sighs> oh, oh, all right. Don't keep it away long. You don't have to get all upset about it. <laughs> it. really is stuck. Did you think I was lying? No, I was just saying that... Sure. Okay. Okay, here, I got it. I'll drop this off on my way to the office. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to yell. It's okay. Hey, look, there's a red mark on your chest where the cat was hanging. Probably from sleeping on it. Hey, you're going to be late for work. <laughs> you're right. Hmm. I'll see you tonight. Try not to be late. I'm making your favorite. I won't be. I couldn't figure out what had happened to Nancy. I'd never seen her so upset before. I put the necklace into my jacket pocket and headed for work. When I got off the bus, I walked toward the little jewelry shop. But when I got there, I saw a sign hanging on the door which said, closed due to illness. I pressed my face against the glass to look inside, expecting to see the old man in spite of the sign. And all of a sudden, an immense woman rapped on the glass from inside and opened the door enough to poke her head through. Hey, you. What do you think you're doing? Can't you see the sign? We're closed. Now stop dirtying up the window. You startled me. We're closed. Come back next week. Uh, maybe you can help me. Well, what is it? I bought this necklace here yesterday for my wife. We don't give cash refunds. No, I, I don't want to return it. Well, then, what is it? Now, I've got things to do. The clasp is broken. I can't fix it right now. If you'll come back next week, Well, I'll... if you could just take a look at it. Uh, I have it right here. Oh, all right. Come in, come in. I'll see what I can do. Thank you. Here, step over here to the counter. Here. Here it is. <gasps> oh, the cat. You bought it? Yes. Uh, my wife has this thing for cats. It's an anniversary present. Oh, I never liked cats. I don't know why he bought this piece in the first place. Your husband? Yes. I hope he's not too ill. 
That's the reason for the sign, isn't it? Oh. Oh, now, here. Here's your necklace. It was just a little bent, but it's fixed now. Oh, thank you. How much do I owe you? No, there's no charge, no charge. Now, if you'll just leave, I, I have some things to do. Well, thank you again. And tell your husband I hope he feels better soon. He's... he's dead. I beg your pardon? He passed away in his sleep last night. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, it's that necklace. It's cursed. First the man who bought it in, and now... It's cursed, I tell you. Cursed. <laughs> I left the shop in a state of numbness. If I'd had any idea the poor woman's husband had died, I never would have insisted that she look at the necklace. And then for her to call it cursed. I walked up the block to my office. I tried not to think about the woman and... By the time I got into the building, I was in a much better frame of mind. It didn't last long, however, because there was a message waiting for me that my wife was in the hospital. Uh, Kevin Coleman? Yes. Where's my wife? What happened? Uh, please sit down. I'm Dr. Smith. I hope I haven't kept you waiting long. No. Perhaps you might be able to help me out a little. Why is my wife here in the hospital? Your wife was brought here by paramedics. Uh, Mrs. Randall called them. Yes, yes, she's a next-door neighbor. It seems she was having coffee with your wife when, uh, according to Mrs. Randall, your wife, Nancy, suddenly stood up very straight, looked ahead with a vacant stare, and then collapsed. Oh. Your neighbor immediately phoned the paramedics. Now, tell me, has your wife had any fainting spells before? No. <sighs> Mr. Coleman, your wife... Your wife is conscious, but she's in a catatonic state. What? She doesn't respond to questions. She won't or can't speak. She hasn't had any kind of stroke that would cause this. Quite frankly, I'm at a loss. I, I'd like to keep her here to run some more tests. Y yes, yes, all, all right. Do whatever you have to do. When can I see her? In a few minutes. Oh, thank you. I sat with her in that room all day. Never once did she move or show any sign of recognizing me. They kept wheeling her in and out for all kinds of tests. And the results were always the same. Negative. By 8 o'clock that evening, there was still no change. The doctor told me to leave, but I just couldn't go home. Instead, I went over to see Roger. Kevin, what are you doing here? I just wanted to talk to someone. Can I come in? Sure, come on. I, um... I heard about Nancy. I've been trying to call you at home. Is she all right? They don't know what's wrong with her. Well, how is she? She just lies there, staring straight ahead. They've run all kinds of tests, and they can't find out what's wrong with her. I keep thinking about what this lady at the jewelry shop said to me this morning. What? She said the necklace was cursed. Cursed? Yes. And I gave it to Nancy. She wore it all last night. But why would it be cursed? What does that matter anyway? Do you still have the necklace? Yeah. Yeah, I have it with me. Let me see it. Hmm. That's funny. What? The cat is cold. Shouldn't it be? Well, it's never been this cold before. I mean, when Nancy was wearing it last night, it was really warm. And yesterday, before I gave it to her, it was warm. Hmm. Let me see it. <laughs> Seems warm to me. I think that woman was right. You know, I've never really been a superstitious person, but there's something about this cat. I mean, look at, look at those eyes. You just get a, a feeling holding it. Roger, what am I going to do? I suppose you ought to see somebody. Who? Well, I don't know. Necklace looks kind of Egyptian. Why don't you see someone at the university who knows something about Egyptology? A light rain had begun to fall by the time I got home. I undressed and got into bed. My mind was full of fears. I couldn't sleep. I tossed and turned well into the night. I could hear thunder off in the distance. I turned on my side and 
I could see the necklace was on the nightstand. It was an awesome feeling to have that cat staring at me with its emerald eyes pulsating in the dark. All I could think of was what that old woman had said. It's cursed, I tell you. Cursed! Hey, look! In here, inside this stylish man's dress shirt. I'm a Sears Value dress shirt label, just popping with pride. Because Sears Value dress shirts are sure to be popular for a number of reasons. They have fashion spread collars, come in classic patterns and solids in short sleeves. You'll appreciate the permapressed polyester or polyester cotton blends for easy care. Plus, at low value prices, what a buy. Just look for me, the Value dress shirt label at Sears Men's Store, where style, sense, and satisfaction combine to label me right for you. Sears National Automotive Sale. Now, get the full power of the maintenance-free Sears 48 battery for a full $7 off its regular low price. The Sears 48. On sale now, just $42.99 with trade-in. And get great savings on Sears' best-selling belted tire, the Dynaglass Belted 25. Now, save $14 to $28 on sets of four at most Sears tire and auto centers. Prices may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Stop. Strike a chord for spring with baby cord fashions from Sears Junior Bazaar. Baby cords aren't for babies, but for juniors with an eye for style in textured jackets, straight skirts, trouser pants. Stripes of blue and white that are really narrowed down. That's baby cord. To complete your outfit, pop on pretty little blouses, also from Junior Bazaar. Available at most larger Sears retail stores. Howard Duff again with the concluding act of The Curse of Princess Kiestri. I made an appointment to see Professor Borton at the university. He's an archaeologist, an expert in the field of Egyptology. I explained to him this might be a waste of his time, but he seemed anxious to meet with me anyway. I found his office at the university with no trouble and used the skull door knocker. Obviously a present from one of his students. After a few moments, the door opened. What is it? I don't have hours now. Oh, I'm sorry. You must be Mr. Coleman. Yes, I am. I thought you were one of my students. Come in. Thank you. Oh, sit down. Get comfortable. Let me clear some of these things off my desk so I can see you. <laughs> don't mind the skulls. I usually have them staring at my students. Makes it harder for them to question anything I tell them. <laughs> now, what was it you wanted to see me about? You said something about curses? Well, I don't know where to start. Do they exist? Oh, if you believe in them, they do. You see, curses are usually the products of a society in which magic and superstition are widely accepted and practiced. Well, can they happen today? Well, why don't you tell me specifically why you came here? I gave my wife a necklace for our anniversary, and I didn't know it at the time, but I think it's cursed. Do you have it with you? Yes, right here. May I look at it? Oh, yes, of course. Amazing. What is it? Well, if I'm correct, and I believe I am, you've been carrying an awfully large part of history around in your jacket pocket. Let, 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 let me just look up something here. Let's see, where, where is it, where is it? Ah, here we go. Yes. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. What is it? I was right. This necklace belonged to an ancient Egyptian princess, a princess Kiestri. Oh, we don't know too much about her. Uh, she never reigned over Egypt, and she died at an early age. Well, is there anything in that book about a curse? No, not specifically. But she lived during a period in which magic was believed and practiced. It's, it's very curious that this should happen. What? Well, this whole thing. You see... I had an uncle many years ago who went to Egypt to search for undiscovered tombs. He died there. But if anybody can help you, it's Ben. He was with my uncle. I'll call him and see if we can go over there. Professor Borden called this man, Ben, and set up a meeting for that night. We took the professor's car and drove for about three hours out into the country. It was a dark night, very windy and raining hard as we 
pulled up the dirt road to the house. Here's the place. You better make a run for the front door. I'm soaked. You can get dry in a minute. Come in. Thank you for letting us come, Ben. Storm knocked the power out. Uh, you'd better come sit here by the fire. Now, what do you want? Well, Mr. Coleman here has something that I was hoping you could help him with. What is it? Show him the necklace, Kevin. Here. Good Lord. Then it's what I think it is. Oh, I prayed I'd never see this again. We got this out of a tomb in Egypt, me and your uncle and another man. I don't know how you came by it, but get rid of it. It's bad luck. It's cursed. I'm afraid it's too late. Tell him, Kevin. I gave that to my wife. You and... gave this to your wife? Yes, as an anniversary present. Good Lord, save us all. What's wrong? And I suppose she put it on and wore it? Yes. Did she wear it over a shirt or did the cat actually touch her? She was wearing it with a low-cut dress. In fact, she seemed to have some kind of rash where the stone was. Uh, what is it, Ben? It's too late. Too late for what? Too late for your wife and maybe for all of us. Why? That necklace belonged to Princess Kiestri. A craftsman made it for her for her 12th birthday, and she loved it so much she didn't want anyone else to have one like it. So she had the craftsman put to death. The craftsman's father was a, a wizard. He called down a curse on the princess. He transferred her spirit into the stone cat so that when she died, her spirit couldn't travel to the afterworld. How does this explain what's happening to my wife? I'm getting to that. This wizard was sly. He didn't want to anger any of the gods who may have been watching over the princess. If that stone cat touches the living flesh of any woman, the princess spirit would be released to possess the woman's body. You mean my wife? The princess is taking over her body. How can I prevent it? I don't think there is a way to stop it. There must be something. What if the necklace were returned to the tomb? Uh, that's possible. I've heard of similar things. But it would have to be placed in the exact spot it came from. Now, wait a second. Are you saying I have to go to Egypt? If you don't go back with him... Think of what will happen. A 5,000-year-old princess will wake up in the body of his wife. I had no choice. Two days later, Ben, Nancy, and I were in Egypt. We put Nancy to bed... Ben and I went down to the bar for a drink. It was in there that I began to realize that this was not my problem alone, that many people's lives were being affected. And what may I bring for you? Whiskey? Uh, I'll have the same. Very good. I will be right back. When will we go out to the tomb? Tomorrow night. Well, why not first thing in the morning? You told me before we left home that we only had a few days. You can only find the tomb by watching the moon rise on the 18th or 19th of this month. We got here too late tonight. Here we go. One whiskey for you. Thank you. And one for you. Oh, thank you. You are most kind. I must confess, business has been unusually slow of late. Is that so? Oh, you have just arrived, no doubt. Yes, a few hours ago. Then you do not know the, the voice in the night or the strange lightning in the desert? No. Tell us about it. There is not much to tell. Every night for the past four or five nights, as soon as the moon is directly overhead, it begins. First the wind. You notice there's only a gentle breeze now. But wait. You will see. Then comes the voice. It calls out something, but it is not possible to tell what it is calling. And then, off in the distance, there are flashes of lightning... They say it is one of the ancient pharaohs. That's incredible. Listen. Ha, 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 ha.
There was no time to lose. The transference could happen at any time. The next day seemed endless, but the sun finally left the sky, and when the moon rose, we were ready. Ben, Nancy, and I started across the desert in an open jeep. We drove directly toward the moon, ignoring the existing roads, driving with only our destination in mind. After a few hours, we were there. Yeah, we're here. The entrance is just beyond that rise. Over here. I'm coming. I have to carry her. Oh, let me help you. Uh, we can put her here. Well, the entrance is sealed. There's no way to get in. Uh, maybe if we just leave the necklace no, here. No, no, that won't be good enough. We have to get inside. Look, Nancy's walking. We'll follow her. She's moving that rock. Why, it's another entrance. How did she know it was there? The princess. Has it happened yet? Is no, she? No, I don't think so. Come, let's follow her inside. It's so dark. Here's a flashlight. Turn it on. My God. I never really believed it would look like this. She's moving ahead. We can't lose sight of her. How much deeper do we have to go? The antechamber shouldn't be too much farther. She's stopping? Yes. It looks like there's... Look, there's been a cave in. That's the antechamber. Here, help me clear an opening. <clears throat> These rocks are so heavy. I don't see how they could have built this. Well, at least this one's light. I got... What's the matter? It, it was a skull. Uh, pay no attention to it. Uh, I'm almost there. Where's Nancy? She's moving down the corridor. All right. Give me the necklace and stay with her. I'll follow you after I put this inside. But I... Don't argue. You can't lose sight of her. There are hundreds of secret passages. Now, you go with her. I'll be out in a minute. I don't like leaving you alone. I'm fine in here. Go after her now before we lose her. Go! still clutching the necklace tightly in his hand. The eyes of the cat were pulsating furiously. Ben was dead. I turned and ran after Nancy. I found her in a dark chamber. A shaft of moonlight entered from somewhere above, and I could see her silhouette kneeling before an altar. Suddenly she rose and thrust her hands toward the sky. The chamber lit up from the flash of lightning, and she turned to face me, eyes pulsating, a wild look about her. I sank to my knees. It had happened. There, before me, in all her glory, stood Princess Kiestri. The earth began to shake, and the stone walls fell all around me. I believed I would never again see the light of day. here, and I can only think of one reason why, to serve as a warning. You see, I understand a piece of jewelry, a black cat with green emerald eyes is floating around somewhere out there. It's appeared in a few jewelry shops that I've heard of, and so I must warn you, stay away, stay away from that cat. It's cursed. Believe me, I know.
ocean speaks on gossamer wings through dresses and skirt sets and wonderful things, filmy clouds of prints in a palette of colors. That sheer dressing from Sears. For sheer drama, you'll love the way light flitters back and forth through fabric you'll hardly believe is Easy Care Polyester, making each dress a sheer pleasure to care for. In Mrs. Half Sizes, Mrs. Petite, and Junior Sizes at most larger Sears retail stores. Sheer dressing from Sears. Let's try some word association. In. Out. Top. Bottom. Paint. House. What? Oh, the whole house needs painting. Hmm. On. Off. That's it. Sears $4 off paint sale on each gallon of interior fashion flat, semi-gloss, and ceiling paint, plus exterior flat house paint. I'll uplift my home and my spirits by painting new life inside and out. Hard. Easy. They're one-coat paints when used as directed. And now, $4 off. Sale ends April 21st at most Sears retail stores. Dates may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Today's man of action wants slacks that look good, feel comfortable. And at Sears, you'll find great fitting slacks with dash and durability. What really makes it all happen is Fortrell polyester gabardine, woven with two-way stretch that moves with you through a day's worth of action. In popular solid colors a man can feel comfortable with. Any way you look at it, these stretch-woven permapressed slacks hold up handsomely to a hard-driving summer. That's style, sense, and satisfaction at most larger Sears retail stores. The Sears Radio Theater has been brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company, where our policy is satisfaction guaranteed or your money back. Sears, where America shops for value. The Curse of Princess Kiestri was written by David Chomsky, produced and directed by Elliot Lewis. Your host was Richard Whitmark. Our star was Byron Kane. Also heard were Linda K. Henning, Olin Soleil, Ralph Sedan, Paula Winslow, Lee Millar, Herb Rudley, and Ivor Berry. The music for Sears Radio Theater was composed and conducted by Nelson Riddle. Art Gilmore speaking. Associate Director of Sears Radio Theater is Ken McManus. Sound effects were created by Bud Tollefson. Joanne Thompson is production supervisor. And the recording engineers are Joe Wachter and Hal McDonald. The Elliott Lewis production of Sears Radio Theater is a presentation of CBI. This is Mel Blank and Voices of My Business. In Warner Brothers cartoons, you probably know me as the crazy little character... Daffy Duck! <laughs> or... Uh, Porky Pig! Or... Bugs Bunny Duck! We all have a voice in matters that affect us in our community, and it's necessary to speak out to get the best possible community services. One community tradition which really deserves vocal support is the library. The library has been serving up all kinds of information ever since this country began. After all, you can get thousands of voices in the library's books on film, records, and tapes. And you can borrow these voices freely. But the library can't give you such good service without a lot of vocal and personal support from you. This means you need to write or call your community officials and speak up for the library. It's all there, folks. That library. A public service message from the American Library Association and this station. Here's a tip from your Better Business Bureau. Are you looking for a nursing home? Well, here are a few tips. Start by getting a list of the licensed facilities in your area from your local health department. Find out whether they are certified to receive Medicare and Medicaid payments. Also, talk to your friends and talk to your neighbors who've placed a family member in a home. You see, it's important to visit a nursing home to check the facilities and the services. For example, food handling, patient care, in-service staff training, housekeeping, and patient activities. Now, before you sign an admission agreement, you read it carefully, including the fine print, and ask a lot of questions about what's included in the price. A number of nursing homes charge extra for such items as wheelchairs, air mattresses, and personal laundry. A tip from your Better Business Bureau. Next 
Monday's Sears Radio Theater will be a story of the West with Lorne Green as your host. Let's listen. When a man's that polite, it usually means he ain't letting on the whole truth about himself, and I intend to do a little investigating. Daddy! I got the feeling that Duke ain't got a cent to his name. I suspicion he's just married you for our money, and that's just what I intend to find out. So be sure and tune in next Monday to the Sears Radio Theater.